Yes, Madam President. Um, Dr. Celia May Moreno. Present. Mr. Hector Noyola. Present. Mr. Jesus Martinez, present. Mr. Jose Valdez. Absent. Absent. Mr. Ricardo Garza. Absent. Not here yet. Mr. Hector Garcia. I am present. And Mr. Jose R. Perez. Present. We do have a quorum, Madam President. Special observance. No. Good evening, board members. Yes. Today, Laredo ISD continues following its tradition of recognizing a veteran for outstanding service to our country. Over the past 13 months, we have started our board meetings by paying tribute to a veteran. This month, we are honoring a retired college professor who served with both the United States Marine Corps and the United States Naval Reserves. The Instructional Television Department, under the direction of Jeanette Martinez, has prepared a video on this well-known educator, Dr. Lem Landis Railsback. Lights, please. The Laredo Independent School District recognizes the veterans who proudly and valiantly served in the military. Freedom is not free, so we pay tribute to our local veterans. Today we recognize a proud veteran of the United States military, Dr. Lem Landos Railsback. Dr. Railsback began his service with the United States Marine Corps Reserve in 1954 and served until 1959. He had initially enlisted with an eight-year commitment but was honorably discharged after five years. I went to basic training at MCRD in San Diego. Then I, I got a music scholarship in Saul, to Saul Ross. I went to college, and after five years, six months, through the mail, I got an honorable discharge. And I went back to the captain in San Angelo, and I said, what is this? And he said, the first time I'd ever heard the expression, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. He said, they had a budget cut, and they ripped you. So you're finished with your eight-year obligation. You don't have to finish the other two and a half years. So I thought, well, that's a good deal. He continued his education and earned six degrees, including a PhD from the University of Texas at Austin. In 1972, he decided to join us in Laredo as a professor at TAMU. He had already been a professor for more than 10 years, when in 1983, at the age of 47, he decided to volunteer his service again, but this time, to the United States Navy Reserve. He did this because of the attack on American and French servicemen during the Lebanese Civil War. He tells us about this decision. Well, these kids that all come into the barracks, and they want to stay one night and go home the next day, come on back to the U.S. And uh, a bombing they bombed them, killed almost 200, I think over 200. And I just thought that uh, that I could help. So, so that's why I went and tried to volunteer again. Education and traveling have been very important in Dr. Railsback's life. Education is everything. In fact, if you don't get educated, and I'm, I'm not talking just about school learning, I'm talking about the education in the field. Education is everything. That's what makes you into the individual. So I'd recommend to anybody, even older people, to go back to school, go get educated as much as you can. He views himself as a perennial student and a global citizen. So far, he has already visited all 50 states and 30 countries around the world. Travel, Bacon was right, travel is what broadens you. If you stay in the same town, same situation the whole life, you kind of missed out. Travel is the way to the world. You get to know all kinds of new cultures, new people, new experiences. Our travel is amazing. In total, he dedicated 50 years of his life teaching in all levels of education 
all the way from elementary to the university graduate level. He retired seven years ago from TAMIU. He also retired from the United States military after serving a combined 20 years. He tells us a little bit about what military service was like. Well, military service is very structured. They tell you at the head, right at the start, what you need to do to go to the next level. Every step of the way is very structured, step by step by step. And if you do all those things, you get promoted. It's a fair system. He also tells us if he would recommend military service. The places you get to go, the things you get to do, it's just amazing. Uh, uh, this is my old chief hat, and I wear it with pride because to me that was one of them. Most uh, structuring for me, uh, opportunities I ever had, all 20 years, step by step by step. I recommend it to anybody. Thank you, Dr. Railsback, for your contributions. LISD proudly salutes you for serving our country and protecting our freedom. The Laredo Independent School District recognizes the veterans who proudly and valiantly served in the military. Freedom is not free, so we pay tribute to our local veterans. Dr. Railsback, LISD thanks you for fighting for our democracy. Would you please honor us by leading the United States Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, for which, for which it stands, one nation, with liberty and justice. Thank you, Dr. Railsback. I ask that you please remain standing for the national anthem, which will be performed this evening by Martin High School senior and TMEA All Area Band member Diana Arredondo, under the direction of Mr. Bobby Castro. <laughs> Arredondo. Dr. Railsback, before you return to your seat, the LISD Board of Trustees would like to present you with a plaque, and this is also your opportunity to, to say a few words. Thank you. 
District Board of Trustees recognizes Dr. Lam Railsback, who served his country in the United States Marine Corps for five years and in the United States Naval Reserves for 15 years. This is presented to him January the 14th, 2016. Congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, board for doing this honor to me and for I applaud their effort in recognizing the veterans. It's a worthy cause. Number two, for all of you that were curious but too polite to ask, I want to explain this. Marines are clean shaven. Sailors are clean shaven. But when I make a speech in March the 21st at the National Social Science Association in Las Vegas, I'm going to come back to the beauty college and they're going to give me a, a shave, a free shave, <laughs> and a free haircut, and they're going to send it to the place that makes wigs for little girls that lose their hair to cancer. So please understand, this is for a good cause. <laughs> The third thing I'd like to uh, mention, I brought seven of the programs that uh, uh, when we made the video of different veteran groups that I've spoken to on Veterans Day. Uh, one of the, I was not the only one that spoke on those special days. One of the programs that I brought has this young man that I think most of you know as the main speaker that day. His name was Joe Valdez, I think you know him. Okay. I mean, he's done a lot for this veterans group. Thank you very much again. Thank you. While Dr. Railsback makes his way back to his seat, I also want to recognize his dear friend, Dr. Jacinto Juarez, former Laredo City Councilman. Thank you, Dr. Juarez. Dr. Moreno, may I continue with the special observances? Okay. Under special observances, we have Elisa Martinez passed away on Monday, December 28th, 2015. She was a custodian at Cigarroa High School. Sergio Trevino passed away on Thursday, December 31st, 2015. He retired after 16 years of service at LISD as a truant officer. And LISD sends its condolences to the Martinez and Trevino families. May we have a few moments of silence in, in memory of, the, of Ms. Martinez and Mr. Trevino. Thank you. May I continue with board recognitions? Yes. For board recognitions this evening, we have an exciting evening planned. LISD is, planned to rec is pleased to recognize four campuses for their accelerated reader success, our future top chefs, five outstanding student athletes, an award-winning architect fir firm, and seven outstanding community leaders. We begin by recognizing four campuses for meeting the district's accelerated reader goal in the area of limited English proficient and gifted and talented students. First, we have the campuses who met the district's limited English proficient goal of having 75% of the LEP population meet their accelerated reader goals during the second marking period. And these schools are Heights Elementary School. And here representing Heights Elementary is their school librarian, Ms. Adriana Villarreal.
and their school principal, Ms. Adriana Padilla. Also joining us is the Director of Library and Media Services, Ms. Meli Pais. From J.C. Martin Elementary School, we have representing the Principal Delma Al Alanis Ramos and School Librarian, Ms. Cynthia Hernandez. From Alma Pierce Elementary School, their principal, Ms. Noralva Johnson, and their librarian, Laura Chapa. Now we have Santa Maria Elementary School. Santa Maria met the district's LEP goal of having 75% of their LEP population as well as the district's goal of having 100% of their gifted and talented students meet their accelerated reader goals during the second marking period. Representing Santa Maria is their principal, Jose de Leon, and their school, uh, school librarian, Ms. Elizabeth Salinas. At this time, we'd like to recognize some of our most talented culinary arts students. Members of the Cigarroa High School Culinary Arts Program won first place last month in the Student Iron Chef Challenge Recipe Contest at the third annual LISD Food Expo Extravaganza. The Cigarroa High culinary students were declared the winner of the Iron Chef Contest after preparing a delicious Mexican white bean soup. Here representing Cigarroa are Iron Chefs Natalie Orona, Jasmine Silva, Jasmine Silva and Joel Perez, along with their sponsor, Veronica Dominguez, and their assistant principal, Mr. Armando Molina. Also, our Child Nutrition Program Director, Mr. Robert Cuellar. We want the recipe, okay? <laughs> Now, 
next, LISD congratulates five remarkable athletes who excelled on the gridiron this past season, and they were selected to the 2015 Texas Associated Press Sports Editors Class 5A High School Football <coughs> All-State Team. First, we have Cigarroa senior linebacker Vicente Terrones, who earned All-State honorable, honorable Mention honors. Vicente led the Toros this season with 104 tackles, two fumble recoveries, and one interception. Vicente has a prior commitment this evening, and he is unable to join us, but here receiving the award on his behalf is his coach, Jesse Esparza. <laughs> with coach Esparza is also Gus Perez. And we have Arlene uh, Averill, Assistant Athletic Director for LISD. Next, we have Martin High School senior linebacker Raul Lucio, who was selected to the All-State Honorable Mention team. Raul finished the season with 12.5 with tackles per game, with 17 for a loss, one sack, and a forced fumble. Here with Raul is his coach, David Charles. <laughs> coach Charles and his mother, Ms. Lucio. And now we have Nixon High School senior defensive back, Peter Ledesma, who was selected to the All-State Honorable Mention team. Peter had six interceptions, a forced fumble, a, re a recovery, and 71 tackles this season. With Peter is his coach, Tommy Ramirez, and school principal, Dr. Gerardo Cruz. Next we have from Nixon High School, junior linebacker Eric Oliva, who was chosen for the All-State Honorable Mention Team. Eric led the team with 128 tackles, two forced fumbles, a fumble recovery, one sack, and he was named, to the, most, he was named the most outstanding linebacker in District 29-5A. Here with Eric is his coach, Tommy Ramirez, and of course, Dr. Cruz. Ask our students not to leave. We're going to do a group shot in the end, okay? And finally, we have Nixon High School senior Mateo Rincon, who led the way as the only Laredo player named to the All State first team as a defensive back. Mateo finished the season with eight interceptions, 61 tackles, and was named the most outstanding cornerback in District 29 5A.
We applaud Vicente, Raul, Peter, Eric, and Mateo for their athletic prowess. And we'd like to get them back for a group shot. They're all still here. Please come forward. Let's see. We're covering up Mr. Garcia. Yeah. Okay, there. <laughs> Thank you. Now we are recognizing a local award-winning architects firm. Our good friends at Frank Architects have been awarded a Design Excellence Award by the Lower Rio Grande Valley American Institute of Architects Chapter and Design Awards Program for their design of the Vidal M. Trevino School of Communications and Fine Arts. The Merit Award was presented in December during a ceremony in McAllen, Texas. Here representing Frank Architects, is Frank Rothnowski. Also joining us for the photo are Angel Velasquez, LISD Executive Director of Plant Facilities and Support Services, along with Omero Pais, LISD Construction Project Manager. Thank you, congratulations, great school. And before we conclude tonight's recognitions, we have saved the best for last. In the world of education, January is known as School Board Recognition Month. This year's theme, as you can see from all the banners in our boardroom, is Superheroes for Schools. It's an especially fitting theme since all of our board members use their superpowers for the education of, of LISD's students. ITV has produced a short video in honor of our board members. With great power comes great responsibility. Thank you for making super decisions. Our Laredo ISD superheroes make our district fantastic, outstanding, and great. No matter how bad things get, something good is out there. Thanks for your super commitment. Intelligence is a privilege. Thanks for making it super. You create wonders with the decisions you make. There's a right and a wrong in the universe. And you make everything right. Thank you for being our superheroes. Thank you, Board of Trustees. Thank you, LISD School Board.
It takes courage, skill, and devotion to serve on a school board. And our trustees do it well, and they make it look easy. Our kids look up to you, and we can't thank you, for er we can't thank you enough for everything that you do. So on behalf of LISD, please accept our tokens of appreciation, our respect, and our cariño. God bless you all. And board members, this concludes tonight's board recognitions. We will take a five minute break. Thank you. First, we'd like to recognize that Mr. Ricardo Garza has joined us. Thank you. Excuse me. Pardon me. Do we have anyone for a public forum? Have one person. Oh, we do have one person. We do have one person. Call it out. Mr. René de la Viña, would you please come forward? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board, uh, Dr. Nelson, for the record, Renee de la Viña. Uh, first, uh, you're an excellent board. I've always said that, and I remember Dr. Moreno saying when she came first came on the board that the, uh, the pride was going to come back to LISD, and it sure has, uh, definitely. we got a solid uh, school board. You're an excellent school board, and I'm very proud of it. Also to say that I'm also a product of LISD. Um, I'm here tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the board, Dr. Nelson. Um, I don't know, about, about four years ago, I believe when Dr., uh, I mean, when Judge Valdez, Danny Valdez left office, before he left, we used to have what's called the Special Student of the Month. And I've noticed that on TV, the Border Patrol recognizes uh, high schools and, and there's some other programs out there that come out on TV, the seventh grader, seventh grade student of the month. But I've noticed that when it comes to our students with special needs, we used to have a program back then. And I knew this day would come and I was always reminding the school boards at both school districts, and I will be approaching United ISD about this, is that we need to figure out a way to go back to recognize our students with special needs, students with mental retardation, autism, you know. We need to recognize them. Even here, I noticed that, and, and there's nothing wrong with recognizing all these other students, it's fantastic, but I've noticed that we're leaving out our students with special needs. We need to recognize them because they deserve to be recognized just like anybody else. So I'm asking you to please look into your to your heart and let's figure out a way. I'll, I'll be more than glad to volunteer my time to help you set this up. It's not hard and to find sponsors and whatever, uh, but we need to recognize our special population. They've been left out for the longest time and I think it's time to recognize them just like anybody else. And uh, I've approached several politicians, I'm not gonna mention names, but you know, they, they just give me a bunch of empty promises. So maybe on election time, they'll come forward, I hope, you know. But uh, I'm asking this board to please, let's start the special student of the month again, the way we used to do it. They used to come out on TV all the time. And believe me, these kids with severe mental retardation, they try just as hard as any regular student. And I know because I taught them for 31 years. So I'm asking you, please, please, let's do something. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Good job. Our next item is committee meetings reports. Dr. Nelson. Thank you, Dr. Moreno. Uh, we've submitted the minutes from our committee meetings, and uh, you have a copy. We provided a copy to each board member, and uh, we'll be following up on all the items as presented. If there's any comments or questions from the board, we'll entertain those. Uh, no, but speaking about committees, perhaps our student services committee can look at the recommendation that was previously made. Absolutely. Thank you. Board com communication. We'll start with Mr. Perez, Jose Perez. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate Dr. Railspack for joining the forces and helping the, in the defend our country. Uh, those are things that we never can repay. And also, 
I want to thank all the administration, all the teachers, and especially parents that are recognizing us this month. And we hope we have not let them down. I know that through the committees uh, that we have, we're always looking for new things to improve and uh, not go behind on the technology and all those kinds of things, the buildings, everything. So I hope that, you know, like we said, and I feel the same way that we are a team of eight, and uh, I am very grateful and uh, feel good about it, that we work together. We have differences of opinion, but at the end, is the students that count, not anybody else. That's what we're here for, and I hope that all the administration, all the principals, and uh, especially also the parents that were in it together, and if one of them lack to participate, then we can't do it. We can't do it up here. We can't do it at the administration level. We cannot do it at the teacher level. But we need also the parents' involvement. And with that, uh, I also want to thank everybody for inviting me to their schools. Sometimes I can't make it, but if your heart is in, uh, with me, that's what, what counts. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Garcia? Before, before I, I spoke, uh, I'd like to ask everybody for a moment of silence. We had the loss of our state representative, Henry Cuellar's mother, uh, Odilia Cuellar, Judge Rosie Cuellar's mother, and Sheriff uh, Martin uh, Cuellar's mother just recently passed away. So if you don't mind, a moment of silence, please. Thank you. They ra she raised uh, great, great, great kids, and, and uh, they're always working for our community. Uh, by seeing everybody here, I guess nobody won the lottery. So, <laughs> one number, three numbers, but that's it. But um, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm thankful for, for sitting in a group like this. Uh, you know what? Uh, we're diverse. Uh, we, do have, we do have different opinions on different stuff, but at the end of the day, we come together to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're doing it in the best interest of our kid, and that's very, that's very important. I know our superintendent uh, uh, guides us that way because his, uh, his, uh, his heart is with the kids of our district, and I thank him for his leadership and, and his team of A2. As Mr. Pettis uh, uh, said, you know what, we, we consider ourselves our own team of aid, and, uh, but without you all, we're, we're nothing. You know, it's surround yourself with good people and good things will happen. And I've always said that. I live by that. My father used to tell me that. So uh, I thank you. Thank all the schools that, that uh, thought of us, um, not only today, but usually throughout the year. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be this week, but the schools are always very, very nice, very, very courteous. Uh, I was invited to a breakfast. I, I had to go out of town. I'm sorry I missed it. But uh, thank you again for everything that you all do. And um, thank you again. Thank you. Mr. Noyola. Thank you. Uh, Mr. De La Viña, thank you for this beautiful idea. Uh, please feel assured that we're going to do our best to make this happen. Also, I would like to wish uh, all LIZ Nation a happy, healthy, and successful school year. There's uh, also a lot of good basketball games and soccer games going on in our district. Please make time to see these teams play. You'll enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Garza, Rick. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, piggybacking on uh, Mr. Noyolas, remember, I think it's next week. We're having the Martin Nixon game at the LEA. Everybody go. Let's fill that thing up. Do me a favor and just go out there and enjoy yourselves. It's something special. Um, I want to thank everybody for honoring us this month. Um, it's one of those things that sometimes that uh, I felt privileged from the moment I got here working with the people up here. Um, you know, it's a great group. It's a great administration, great cabinet from the top to the bottom. Uh, all great people. I uh, just encourage you to keep up the good work. Anything that you need from us, we're here to help everybody. We're here to move forward. We're here, we're here. 
my, my goal has always been is how do we get from good to great? And so just feel free to call us. And we're nonetheless with whatever we think we are, we are here to help each other. And we, we'd like to form the, we have the greatest team in the world up here. So use everything that, use all the resources that you have in front of you. You know, we can accomplish greater things. We're headed in the right direction. I appreciate everything that you all do. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Martinez. Thank you, doc Dr. Moreno. Uh, also, in regards to uh, passing away the mother of the, uh, of the uh, My Myers family passed away also, and I'd like to just uh, keep that in mind. They were very dedicated educators, and uh, she was a wonderful mother. So our feelings go to the Myers family. Uh, and also, uh, again, the students are the most important thing in our district, in our hearts. But most important, what are the individual teachers doing to impact those students? Teachers need to dedicate themselves and be that one teacher that the student will remember throughout his life. You ask him, who do you remember from high school? Oh, I remember Ms. Doss, or I remember, you know, uh, this teacher or the coach, and so forth. So teachers and educators, remember, please, that the individual impact that you have on the kids will make a difference in their lives. And uh, just remember that, and let's continue with our year. And thank you for the uh, remembrance or the recognition that you're giving us um, this month. Very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move on, I'd like to welcome Mr. Jose Perez up here with us. I don't think it's his first meeting, but I want to officially welcome him. You know, th that shows a lot of strength on your part and a lot of dedication, and you really want to, you talk about a team of eight, you know, might be a struggle, but that team of eight is here and ready to go. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Moreno. I don't want to be the missing link. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> uh, we want to thank everyone that has really gone out of their way for this recognition. W you know, we feel recognized all year long, but these are special moments, and I know that you all really go out of your way in trying to find out how you can uniquely be the one to bring that recognition to us. So thank you all very much. We appreciate it now, every day, and the whole year. So thank you. As far as our students are concerned, we are at mid-year. That means it's happy new year, but it's also panicky because, you know, it's time to be prepared for exams. So please do your best. Don't waste any time. Don't waste any opportunity. And anything, any suggestions, ideas, definitely you know, talk to our central office people, or our central office people talk to our principals. Let's do everything we can. We are a good district, and we, we need to show it. So thank you all very much. Dr. Moreno, I forgot to thank one more person in the room. Yes. Uh, I'd like to thank John Kazin for everything he does. Yay. We sort of left him on. Yes, Mr. Kazin. Uh, he's fighting uh, some sort of cold right now, and I just I was noticing that we, well, we kind of tend to forget that he's back there <laughs> on Thank the side. You. Thanks a lot, John. OK, our next consent agenda, Dr. Nelson. Uh, Dr. Moreno, we're prepared for items one, two, and three if the board wants to entertain a motion. So moved to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second for items one, two, and three. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Move to approve 3A to 3G uh, uh, amendment. Three we did threes approved. already. So we're at four. Three, three, three. Ah, three? Four. Oh, okay. Four. Motion to approve 4A through 4M. Uh, M. M. So move. Oh, we have second. A motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Move to approve number 6 through 16. Five. Four, no, five, technically five. Five to 16. No, five A and B. 5 A and B and to 16. Okay, we have a motion to approve items 5 A and B and 6 through 16. Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. 
Number 17, Mr. Hector Garcia. Dr. Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. For the record, the item reads discussion and presentation on the House Bill 910 open carry procedures for the school district. My conversations with Trustee Garcia, uh, it was just basically, in my understanding, he can speak for himself, but uh, January 1st uh, began some new legislation from our most recent legislative session. And it is, um, it's really, for the record, we want to emphasize it's not a new rule for Laredo ISD. You could not bring, as, as we said to our, an apparent meeting this morning, um, our director of parental involvement said you couldn't bring guns before January 1 on a campus, and you cannot bring guns after January 1. Having said that, because of the new open carry law, we have lots of people um, carrying weapons. And so we just want to communicate. We visited with our principals. We visited with our parent groups. We'll, we'll, uh, this will be a big part of our presentation at the town hall meeting. I don't want to take all of uh, Chief Palomo's brief presentation, but Dr. Moreno, Mr. Garcia, if you'll allow us, um, Chief Paloma has a brief response for Mr. Garcia's yeah, um, because, uh, it, it, the statement you made, there's just some things that are not not totally true because there was another opinion right after uh, right after law came out that uh, general the the attorney general of the state came out with and I, I know I read some of the statements that the superintendents of both districts were making in the newspaper which were not totally true okay. and they did, I know they did some corrections on it I know uh, uh, but I just want to see what we have right now because like those signs the other use signs they're the wrong size because they tell you a certain certain size of the letter has to be uh, size wise and all that I ordered them for the hotel and they give you a specific size so let, let me see what, what we have. Chief Please. Palomo. Good evening. For the record, my name is Richard Palomo. I'm the Chief of Police for Laredo ISD Police Department. Madam Chair, Dr. Nelson, members of the board and staff, I'd like to give you a brief overview. Uh, House Bill 910 became law January 1st, 2016. So what this does is if you have a concealed handgun license in the state of Texas, you can now openly carry. That doesn't mean give you carte blanche where you can carry anywhere. There are certain restrictions, and I'll talk about that. If you're going to carry, it has to be in a holster shoulder or a waist holster that's very clear and guns are still prohibited on school property and we do have school board policy that outlines that gka local addresses that okay, and that's the one i would like to look into because being that we're state funded that's not a true statement because uh if you can carry you can carry a pistol in not into the school not into the school uh, itself but into the parking lot. If there is if there's a practice going on in one parking lot and not the other, they can carry it in the other parking lot. As long as not in the parking lot that this practice is on, and that's that's uh, something we need to go back and look at. Refine. Yeah, refine refine the the, the Wording. into that web. Well, I had the same question. I was going, why? Well. But, so if okay, well, may I respond to that? Yes, well, please. I, I'll do this offline. I just want to be real clear to the public that if you bring a gun in the parking lot in our campuses, we're going to go into a lockdown until we find that weapon. And so I agree with Trustee Garcia 100%. We do not want to speak um, wrong, and we need to seek legal counsel. But I don't, respectfully, I don't know what you're talking about when you say we're lying. Because no, I know you lying. better not bring a gun on our campuses, or we have protocols in place that if we go to find the weapon. If we get a call that says someone has a gun in their parking lot in their, their trunk of their car, we go into a lockdown until we get the weapon. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's things that have to happen until we find that weapon, and we're, we're prepared to do that tomorrow morning at 730. So right. I respect what you're saying, and we'll definitely follow your advice, but right. I, I wouldn't bring sure it to the parking lot. I don't want to make sure I know we're doing everything the school district, I don't think we're lying. I just want to make sure that we're properly uh, uh, fulfilling this. Sure. That, that's what my concerns are. May I just uh, say that the only uh, difference is when a parent comes to pick up their kids, they can drive through uh -huh. the campus with a weapon, pick up their kids, but they cannot stop or get out of the car, pick up the kids and leave. Right. Okay, the law has not changed at all in regards to schools. Uh, nobody can bring weapons to school, either you know, in a holster or, you know, in, in, in the body hidden away. So um, 
We have a class of 15 people this weekend in the Bender Hotel for the class. So there's a lot of interest of people wanting to have the license so they can carry weapons and defend themselves properly. Thank you. May I proceed? Yes. Please. Yes. So uh, we've offered uh, several informational sessions on open carry to school administrators and staff. We've done that before the winter break. Uh, last Friday, I had an opportunity to talk to our leadership team. I've talked to our school administrators. Uh, and we've also developed some very specific protocols in the event that we get calls to our campus about gun sightings. I've already talked to our police officers. They understand what our, what our position is and our school administrators. So they have a good understanding of how to deal with those type of calls. Uh, 3006 and 3007 signs, that's what the law requires. These are directly from TASB. These are TASB signs. <laughs> 3006 is for concealed, 3007 is for open carry, and those are posted throughout our, uh, our campuses and LISD and our safety department did that. They all have signs. I any questions or comments? No. Uh -huh. no. No. Next item. Thank you, Dr. Moreno. Item number 18 is discussion and possible action to approve the scholastic year calendar for 2016-2017. Uh, Dr. Moreno, members of the board, we we um, respectfully are asking to table this item. Move and to table the item. On we the have calendar. a motion. Second. To table and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Item number 19 is discussion and possible action to approve the design and construction of the Martin High School tennis courts at an estimated amount of $1.5 million. Uh, Dr. Moreno, members of the board, we have our architect, Mr. Frank Rodnofsky, for the record, that I'll invite to the podium to show you, uh, to go over a landscape document that our um, executive assistant has handed out. Motion to approve number 19. Second. I just want to make sure that all the board gets an opportunity to see the design because it is different than the last one we saw. Dr. It Moreno, is. may we allow Mr. Rodnowski yes. to make a brief presentation? Please. For discussion. First yes. second, open for discussion. So you, have you voted on that? No. It's open for discussion. discussion. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Mr. Rodnowski. Uh, good evening. Uh, Frank Rodnowski, Frank Architects. Uh, you have before you uh, a slightly revised uh, plan for the LAST Tennis Center. Uh, at the, uh, we refer to the Four Corners site. Uh, last week at the Business Committee meeting, I believe, I presented uh, a variation of this. This is a little bit more based on the comments and the feedback that we, we, we received from you at the last meeting. Uh, the slide right here is kind of a blow up of that. You can see it. Um, we are incorporating uh, the program uh, that you uh, all uh, had asked us to look at over at uh, Nixon High School. So this layout is in the same vicinity, the same site area as we last presented. However, uh, We've incorporated additional uh, program, uh, like earlier mentioned. The tennis courts themselves will total nine. Uh, we also will have a tennis facility with a large uh, canopy uh, that would uh, uh, run parallel to what we would call more competition courts, where there'd be bleachers, yeah. although we have bleachers now at every court. Uh, also, that small facility will house uh, concessions, coaches' offices, <coughs> storage, uh, restrooms, and lockers. Any questions? Mr. Martinez. Yes. Um, I've been speaking against the uh, elimination of the parking spaces over and over, and I'd like to just uh, speak on behalf of that. Again, uh, the integrity of the oral, overall architectural design of the Civic Center by removing so many parking spaces is, uh, is compromised. I don't think we should eliminate 200 parking spaces or the number that is going to be eliminated at this time. Um, by doing this, eventually we're going to have to replace these parking spaces. The city has told us time and time again. The, uh, the last communications we had from the city manager was, do not remove, and if you do remove them, you're going to have to replace them. We do not have space in this area to replace them with. We're going to have to buy property outside and have the uh, people that come to the Civic Center park outside the Civic Center area. Uh, 
I um, urge the board to consider this um, carefully. Uh, we can find another space for the tennis courts, but we cannot eliminate as many spaces. We're going to be hurting the, uh, the events when we don't have enough parking for the Civic Center. And uh, again, eventually we're going to have to replace them. Again, I'm repeating this because the city has given us the final word. And uh, Mr. Valdez went and talked to them um, a couple of months ago. And then a couple of days after that, we received a letter from the city saying that, again, you have to replace, eventually, the parking spaces that you're removing. So if we're going to replace 200 parking spaces, that means that people are going to have to go park out of the Civic Center area. And the main thing is that the integrity of the overall architectural design of the Civic Center is being compromised seriously. I don't think we should eliminate it. And um, I, stand, I stand on this. I call for the question. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. May we proceed? Uh, no. Yes, sir. How many locker room spaces uh, do you have for our uh, it's, it's tennis a, players? It's a very preliminary design, but I believe, uh, I think we had uh, 20. We were, we were following the same square footage as we have over at Nixon. Okay. For the varsity. Huh? Yeah. Got to earn, gotta earn a locker. <laughs> May you proceed, Dr. Moreno? Yes, next item. Thank you. Thank you. Item number thank 20 you. is this, and congratulations, Mr. Rodnowski, on your design award. No, thank uh, you. Oh, congratulations to all of us. It was obviously a group effort, uh, everybody involved. I mean, from you all all the way down to the staff. I mean, that's what made it a successful project. Thank you. We appreciate your work. Item, item number 20 is discussion and update on the duties of the internal auditor, including, including ongoing audits, possible closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074, subsection A, subsection 1. And we have here to make a brief presentation our internal auditor, Ms. Elizabeth G. Henry. Ms. Henry? Good evening, Board President, members of the Board, Dr. Nelson. As requested, the audit on attendance policies and procedures was completed and it was provided to you in your board packet in on Friday I'm sorry and in currently in progress is the ISS OSS follow-up any questions next item may we have permission to proceed dr. Moreno yes on thank one, you the one question on the yes. ones that we've just done or just finished at what time do we um, comment or or review? We just received one last week. You talking about attendance? Yes. Or um, yes. So it's completed, um, but we can review at another moment at another time. Then yeah, what I what I think Dr. Moreno had mentioned is that she had asked us to have a detailed conversation about the findings of that in the student services committee meeting. Okay. Good. So, all right. So we'll have it for the next yes. February. Right. We we talk about attendance every month, and so we will include a specific response to the findings in this internal audit report. Okay. Let, let me just ask: um, Would it be better that where the whole board is here because it's just a committee, not all of us attend that committee meeting, and this is something that is for the whole board in that particular that we have concerns about. I don't know how you want to handle it, or could it be presented at, at uh, curriculum too, uh, because uh, so we can answer it too. Because I think so. Uh, yeah, because there's some we don't attend, but I, I know there's some issues. I read that, and I have some concerns about it. Well, there's oh. also items that go to the committees, and then they come to the main board. Right. We'll make this one of those with your permission. That you bring it back to the yes, same to board. Yes, to business support. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. May we have permission to proceed, Dr. Martin? Yes. Thank you. Item number 21 is discussion and possible action on the duties and responsibilities of the internal auditor as assigned by the Board of Trustees, including the potential assignment of auditing duties, possible closed session, pursuant to Texas Government Code Section 551.074, subsection A, subsection 1. Dr. Moreno? Yes. Are there any uh, items that the board would like to assign to the internal audit department? Not at this time. 
May we, if having said that, may we have permission to proceed? Right. Yes. Our item in closed session to be discussed is number 22. For the record, it reads, discussion and possible action regarding the potential acquisition of real properties by purchase or by charitable donation, including but not limited to the following, 1420 Corpus Christi Street, 1409 Guerrero Street, and Block 293 and Block 294 Eastern Division, possible closed session pursuant to Texas Government Code Sections 551.072 and 551.073. Dr. Moreno, we request closed session at this time. Motion it to is, go into the yeah. session? We have a motion to go into the executive session. session it's the only item, yes. Okay. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. It is now 634 and we are going into executive session. It's Veronica. Veronica. So oh, there's no actions. So we are back from executive session. No votes were cast. No action was taken. It is 6:59 p.m. Dr. Nelson. Thank you, Dr. Moreno. Before we close, we want to do our communications update. While Mrs. Castillon is making her way to the podium, you ask if there's any this item on an open session. Oh. The to take council, it. council asked me to read the item and allow the trustees to take any yeah, action. You don't have to read it, but just to ask if there's any votes on, on item number 22. Is there any action at this time? I make a motion to give the superintendent the direction to, to, follow, to keep on. Uh, Based on closed session. Right. We have a motion second. and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Now, as we go to do our community, I'll allow Ms. Mrs. Veronica Castillon, our Director of Communications for the record, to make our final presentation, and I'll close with one special announcement. Okay. Ms. Castillon? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <clears throat> the LISD Town Hall meeting is this Saturday, January 16th, starting at 9 a.m. at the Civic Center. Refreshments and information booths will be set up in the ballroom, and we will follow with a question and answer session at 10 a.m. On Monday, January 18th is Martin Luther King Day. Our students have a holiday and our employees will have a staff development. Tuesday, January 19th is the LISD Basketball Classic at the Laredo Energy Arena with four, four varsity games beginning at 4.30 p.m. The Martin Nixon Boys Varsity game, game begins at 9 p.m. Magnet School Recruitment Night and Program Showcase is Wednesday, January the 20th from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Civic Center Ballroom. LISD's top readers in the middle and high schools and elementary will have their Winter Gala, Winter Gala Awards event on Wednesday, January 27th, starting at 5 p.m. in the Civic Center Ballroom. A budget workshop is planned for Thursday, January 28th at 5.30 here in the Amber Yeary Boardroom. And finally, a Rachel's Challenge Rally is planned for Friday, January 29th at Shirley Field at 9 a.m. for all LISD campuses. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castillon. I also wanted to briefly introduce the newest member of our senior level team. Please help me welcome our new chief academic officer, Dr. Sylvia G. Rios. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, I would like to be one of the first to wish uh, a very special member of our team, a happy birthday. And on, on Monday, not only is it a national holiday, but it should be a holiday in the city of Laredo as Dr. Cecilia May Moreno celebrates a birthday. Moreno, thank you. So we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second.